Today we're going to talk about uh, common co-infections uh, that people have when they have Epstein-Barr virus and what tests I would recommend to test for these and exclude them if you suspect that you have more than just EBV because commonly EBV comes with friends so oftentimes it's not just one infection and uh, we have transactivation concept in uh, EBV in medical literature which means that one pathogen pulls on, on another different species, uh, including EBV. So I'm going to talk about one particular uh, direct-to-consumer lab, which is a blessing. In my clinical practice, uh, we used to use different labs, you know, the direct labs that I loved, and I'm going to share these. And these now are available directly to you. So as long as you have a little bit of resources to pay for them, uh, you do not need to have a medical doctor to send these to you and, uh, and provide. So for the community that is watching this in our uh, Dr. Kind CBV community Facebook group, I will also provide a PDF that I'm reading off. So you know what the lab is. There's a link. Um, it's called Direct, uh, Direct Labs. And so you have the whole write out uh, right there in the PDF. So you don't have to take notes. So I'm not gonna go in any particular order. Uh, let's start with SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. It's a breath test. Uh, the best one is three hour lactulose test. Um, Genova has it available through direct labs. <clears throat> and so this is when you suspect you have alterating constipation, diarrhea, you have abdominal issues, you have a lot of bloating when you eat, especially healthy foods. So you may you may want to investigate more uh, what SIBO is. Um, so this is a direct lab. It's perfect. Uh, you get a kit, you blow into it, uh, seal the air and send it back. Uh, so that's easy. You have to prep, prepare two weeks, one week, one day ahead of time. Um, our students in our recovery program actually have all instructions how to do it properly so you don't have to repeat it sometimes you know you have to be careful with the air and the prep but it's easy you can do it at home the other co-infection that we commonly see is H. pylori it's a bacterium that lives in about 50 percent of human stomach linings uh, and you can have a couple of uh, tests to do. Number one, if you've had problems with your stomach, you probably have um, already had uh, endoscopy. Endoscopy will include biopsy of your stomach lining to look for H. pylori, especially if you've had history of gastritis. But biopsy can miss H. pylori because it, it uh, grows in patches. So if you've had that and that's been negative and you still have stomach problems, pain, burning and so on and so forth, um, I would not stop with endoscopy and um, biopsy. I would consider H. pylori breath test or H. pylori stool test or even H. pylori antibodies. So H. pylori breath test is available through direct labs, yes. H. pylori stool test is also available uh, through direct labs, through diagnostic solutions, is the best stool test, actually. That's what I've used uh, clinically a lot in our community. So I, I listed it on this PDF, di diagnostic solutions. Um, the H. pylori antibodies, it would be a blood test. And so I would just recommend the breath test and the stool test. That would be really reliable. And in that PDF, I listed the names of these tests. Uh, I have a screenshot there so you know what you're looking for. The third uh, the third co-infection is Candida. It can come from a variety of uh, causes. One of the biggest ones is antibiotics. If you had a need of antibiotic treatment, Candida is an opportunist that will overgrow. If you have low stomach acid, that can overgrow as well. And the third reason may be mycotoxin exposure from mold, water damage. Uh, that tends to really make candida blow, <laughs> blow up and grow. 
So you can do Candida antibodies, you can do Candida full panel, and you can do uh, IgG food map with Candida yeast, uh, Great Plains lab kits. Whatever you do, you know, you can also discuss with your doctor what would be advisable. There's also uh, one more test with Candida that is more comprehensive, not just about Candida that I, I would do. Uh, all this is through direct labs. Um, organic acid test is fantastic for candida and especially uh, mold exposure and so the the best one is actually organic acid by um, great uh, plains lab uh, genova also has it but genova is a smaller kit both of them are available in uh, uh, in this direct lab, I believe. And so if you take organic acid test, it's a urine test, and it looks like metabolites of all kinds of functions. Uh, but uh, in terms of candida, one marker is called arabinose. If, if that's elevated, that suggests that your candida is actually actively uh, uh, growing in your body so this is like an active infection colonizing you um, the organic acid test is also good for mycotoxins exposure because there are uh, other elements of organic acid test results that will indicate that there are metabolites of um, a water damage um, mold mycotoxins so that would be a good organic acid test would be a good test to do if you're suspecting that. Um, number four would be um, opportunistic bacterial infections like Clostridia, Staph, Strep. Uh, they often come like it's a party time for co-infections. Sometimes they're worms, but not too often. Sometimes they're parasites, not too often, but sometimes. So uh, the, best, uh, the best one test for this is the one that I mentioned before, which is called Diagnostic Solutions. This is the, the famous GI map stool test. That tests a lot of things. We could talk about that all day. It's my favorite. If you do that GI map stool test, I would strongly recommend that you also add zonulin. It's an add-on. Uh, it's worth it because it looks at your tight junctions in your gut lining to see if they're loose. And this is one of the indications that you have leaky gut. And the last one, number five, is mycotoxin mold exposure. It's not technically a co-infection, but let's call it this for the purpose of providing you the lab. So if you've had water damage, if you've lived in water damage buildings, if you suspect you currently have some water damage and you haven't tested your house yet, but you feel like there's something going on, and especially if you're working on your EBV and you're not getting better despite your efforts, mold can be a contributing factor that really blurs that, um, uh, impairs the ability of the body to heal from EBV. So I, I think of it as co-infection because it's like party time again. So I would say um, before you test the house, you could just do the urine test for um, any residue of mycotoxins in, in your body. You typically inhale uh, and then excrete in urine. Um, so the best lab is Great Plains lab. It has a mycotoxin profile. And that's the same lab I would recommend for organic acid test, as I just mentioned. So organic acid test will give you a comprehensive picture of, you, you know, is, is candida already overgrowing? Uh, and is there evidence possibly that there's water damage in your urine? So between uh, the organic acid uh, test and the mycotoxin test, both urine tests are easy. You can actually now ask as well, uh, I might have a mold problem. Let's see if we should test the house. Of course, you can flip it and test the house first. So these are the tests that I would recommend. Easy access right now through direct labs. And we have a direct link to our account.
account with them hands off so you can manage it without anyone.